What's up everybody, today we are looking at installation of a dash cam on uh, Genesis. Uh, in my case, this is a Genesis G80, or uh, to be more precise, this is a 2016 Hyundai Genesis sedan. Now it was renamed as most of you know, uh, but really model and the make of the car doesn't really matter here because um, what happens is uh, installation process is pretty much similar. We'll need a uh, hardwire dash cam accessory here. Uh, this is required to activate a parking recording and uh, to make this uh, little camera work at a full capacity instead of having it active only while driving. So this little camera gives you a uh, use of uh, a red camera detection it gives you uh, gps location it also provides you obviously with the uh, options to take pictures and the most important the dash cam feature now before we start the very important detail here is to pick the right place by the way this is my old camera from ebay i got ages ago so uh, there are plenty of places you can mount the camera however you have to look for the central spot so my old camera was mounted in the corner here however th this specific one will need to be mounted somewhere in the center to capture the entire road before we start installing the thing let's make sure that everything is inside and we have everything in place so the camera comes uh, as it is attached with the base uh, which is mounted on a sticky uh, tape here. This base is removable. Just give me a second. Let me try to pull it off. And here it is. It, it, it's sliding off. So there's supposed to be a spare one, just in case if you mess it up. This thing is uh, attached immediately. And uh, when, you, when installing it, make sure you uh, use some water to uh, wet the surface. Then we have this um, uh, SD card with data and some warranty documents and so on. So um, let's get down to work. I'm sorry, it's hard to film and stick this thing on the screen. So it's very easily applied to the windshield. It's, uh, as I mentioned, that thing is very sticky. So Try to be 100% ready uh, to install it in a place. I suggest to um, install the base on the camera and apply the, the camera and the base together to the windshield to, uh, to apply that perfect um, kind of grip on, on the screen. Then the uh, camera itself comes with uh, clips for the cables. These guys will help you to mount it nicely and uh, will create some spacing uh, for the cable in case if you need to pull it out or you need to reposition it later. However, for me, I found that central position works best. Then uh, next step we're doing here is we are pulling the cable under the roof lining and it's very easily done because uh, roof itself and the windshield, there is a gap. And in that gap, uh, the, the wire goes in nicely. However, try to maintain a little bit of spare wire in there, just in case that uh, you may require to change the position of the camera in the future. And uh, that wire will be there. Uh, otherwise, you'll end up pu pulling and uh, uh, undoing the entire thing again. Then in, in some specific places you feel that there is resistance or where the lining comes in close with the surface. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, there are some tools in the market, very cheap ones, plastic ones. However, I don't really use that. I'm using a simple round key here and uh, it works perfectly for me. Let me show you how I use it. I just basically fit it in and push the wire through. Just make sure you don't lose the key in there. This is going to be the hardest portion of the installation. You will need to fit that wire through the seam on the pillars. And uh, that seam is a little bit tighter than the one you've been fitting through uh, right by the windshield. 
However, it's uh, very easy doable and all you have to do is just apply some pressure right through the seam, uh, bend it off a little and uh, feed the wire inside. It's very important to feed the wire through because uh, uh, pillar itself contains a airbag and uh, you need to make sure that it's not blocking it off. Then once you're through, just peel off the weather strips. They're easily getting off. Uh, they're not glued, so don't worry about spoiling them. I'll show you later how, how to put them back in place. So once the wire is through, you'll need to pull it all the way down through the pillar and lead it towards the console itself. And uh, under there, you have the fuse box. Another way to pull this wire through is by going from the other side in. So you can see, I couldn't push it in through myself. So I fed the wire through the pillar on the other end and I started to pull it in. By uh, pulling it downwards, you will uh, slowly squeeze it through. However, don't pull too hard. You don't want to tear that wire. And uh, second advice I'm going to give you here is to leave enough wire to actually pull through. As you can see, I didn't leave enough, so I'll, I'll have to redo it again. Now I'm done here. Let me show you how the wire goes through. As you can see, there is nothing at the top and the uh, wire itself goes right through that crack between the weather strip and the console. And uh, once you click it back in place, it looks like brand new and never touched. And uh, what you'll be doing here is feeding that wire right through that crack uh, down there into the console. You can feed it underneath, but it's not going to be aesthetically beautiful uh, as if when you just feed it through that uh, crack in there and uh, bring it all the way down to the fuse from behind. What fuse to connect it to, it's up to you. Now is the final and the most important part, don't screw it up. Here I have the layout of my fuse box. For your installation, I recommend you to look at your own and uh, to find the layout, look at the cover of the fuse box or look at the car's manual. If you cannot find it there, look online. So to connect your dash cam, you will need to find three types of power. So first one is going to be a continuous power supply. This is something that is usually working without the ignition, like your dome lights, your emergency lights, brake lights, etc. Uh, then you'll need to find the uh, power source that is dependent on the ignition. Usually it's your stereo fuse or something like plugs uh, and sockets and, and etc. for your accessories. And then you'll need to find uh, ground connection. Ground connection is the easiest one, so just find a metal uh, bolt or a nut somewhere under the dash that is directly linked to your vehicle's body. That will be your ground. And once connected, uh, there are several ways to uh, connect your fuses. So first one is to just literally uh, put a loop on one of the legs of the fuse and just plug it in. Uh, just make sure that your wire is nicely and neatly adjusted to it because the space in there is limited. Um, and uh, another one is to actually buy a special extension, which I find useless in this case, but if you want to spend an extra 10 bucks, why not? Uh, there are extensions that actually go in, into the original socket while bring out the fuse itself into like specialized socket with the wires. Um, here you have the uh, sample of it from the installation guide. And uh, once you're in, there is only one way to find out if it works. And now this is the time to actually test it. So just press the button. Works. <laughs> 